We find that successful companies embrace five core disciplines for strategic supply chain management. The first one being strategy, followed by organization, process, collaboration, and performance measurement. Successful companies look at these holistically and develop them concurrently, which means as they develop one, they understand the impacts on the other core disciplines. I'd like to share a few things that are quite uh, interesting and, and common to leading companies. There are a number of attributes that are quite common to leading companies. One of them is they are very customer in. What does that mean exactly? It means they really look at what the consumer or the customer experiences and ask, how do I make that work from a supply chain perspective? And that requires quite a bit of interaction and dialogue between marketing, between sales, between the supply chain community. And really getting that cross-functional dialogue going is critical and is characteristic of the leading companies. And you see that at the management team level. At the management team level, the different management team members are talking together about how do we make something work that makes a difference in the marketplace, that grows that top line. So that cross-functional or that dialogue across functions is characteristic and it's really driving that customer in approach to the supply chain. And we've noticed a very different approach to resilience uh, from leading companies versus what I would call your average company. And they are willing to put more investment in the supply chain. They're willing to have a redundant manufacturing facility. They're willing to invest more to achieve that resilience, but that really is only part of the story. To really get resilience, we need to also be able to use that asset base in a more flexible way. And that means where we might be producing uh, in Mexico for North America, if we have an issue with the Mexican plant, we should be able to shift that manufacturing perhaps to another location, even in Europe. You know, if that's what it takes to continue our ability to produce goods and services. So the ability to move activities across the globe on a periodic basis to to deal with a natural disaster, for example, is a critical aspect of resilience, but it requires some things that leading companies do well that your average companies don't do well. Supply chain talent is one of the most important topics on most CEOs' agenda today. Why is that the case? Primarily because the shift in what's required uh, versus the past. And what do I mean by there's been a shift in what's required? If we take a look at supply chain talent historically, when we talk about supply chain, we talk about execution activities. How many people do I have in the warehouse? How many people do I have doing procurement? How many people do I have in manufacturing? How many people do I have in order management? What we could call execution activities. But over the last 10 years, there's been a strong migration toward other areas that are very information intensive and that require more analytical abilities and also that are a lot more relationship based. Let me take an example, planning, supply chain planning. How do we develop an outlook on what the demand is going to be over the next month, six months, 12 months? Different skill set than we see in the execution world. And then another area that has emerged and we see this typically in the leading companies, a whole area of disciplines that we read about in the press, supply chain risk management, uh, supply chain performance management, making sure that we have processes that are documented and managed. All of this is very much knowledge work that requires a different skill set. So this migration of the portfolio of skills required has really put pressure on many organizations. They need to find different kinds of people. They need to attract those different kinds of people. And that is a very high hurdle for many organizations. If you're not already excellent at execution, why would someone join your organization to do a more knowledge worker job when you're not already a high performer. So unfortunately, high performers are crowding out the lower performers in the war for talent. Mm -hmm.